welcome back to the simulator, trooper. You're here, it means that we are reviewing the basics of your next deployment. So form up, and listen closely. These battles to come will not be your normal battlefront. This training will review the essentials. But before we get into that, I want to make it clear. To achieve victory, working with your squad is not optional. A strong squad together can change the tide of a battle in any moment. This instruction will cover the following. Objectives. FOB creation and destruction of enemy FOBs. Your heads up display. Classes. And how to drain the enemy tickets. This right here is your deployment map. On top of being able to see the map, you'll be able to join friendly squads, choose your class, and choose your spawn point as well. Most battles that you'll be in require objectives. A captured friendly objective looks like this. A neutralized objective looks like this. And objectives that the enemy has captured looks like this. The main goal of galactic contention is to not let your tech account reach zero and to drain the enemy's tick account to zero. Friendly tickets will be displayed at the very top of the deployment map. There are multiple ways to drain enemy tickets. Capturing objectives, destroying hostile FOB radios, destroying hostile vehicles, and eliminating hostiles. There are multiple different ways you can save your own tickets. First of all is defending the main objectives. Second of all is defending FOB radius. And last of all, when a clone trooper goes down, you can revive them using your bandage. Do not give up if you die. Let the medics do their job. FOB is the most important part of the battlefield. FOBs provide a spawn point for your troopers, as well as an area to resupply. You're also able to build up lots of emplacements here, such as AA cannons, E-webs, tow missiles, mortars, and multiple structures. The only way to build up an FOB is a logistics vehicle. This logistics vehicle right here carries supplies essential to the radio, such as ammo and build. The only way the squad lead can place a radio down is this logistics vehicle right here. Once a squad lead places a radio down, you can interact with the vehicle to unload the supplies. Other logistics vehicles include the ATT and the LAAT. All structures and emplacements have to be built up before they're functional. To do this, you're going to have to pull your shovel out. Once you have your shovel out, you can go up to a structure or an emplacement and start building it up. The more people you have building, means the quicker that thing is going to get built. And remember, your squad lead does not have a shovel, so he's counting on you all to do that. The CIS have similar, but slightly different visually structures from us. So if you all see any of these, report it to your squad lead immediately. I'm only gonna say this once, so take note now. There are only a handful of ways to take down an enemy radio. Number one is to dig it down with your shovel. And number two is to use high explosive devices such as plantable debts or incendiaries.
Your heads-up display is very simple. At the very bottom, we have your compass, which shows which direction you're facing. At the bottom right, we have how many mags you have left. And above that, shows which stance you're in, whether it's standing, crouched, or prone. At the bottom left, we have your squad mates, with a little picture to the left of them, which shows which role they're playing. Each trooper has seven slots of equipment. One has your primary blaster. Two has sidearms and other melee weapons. Three has thermal dits and other explosives. Four has your smoke dits. Five carries your bector and bandages. Six has utilities such as shovels and binoculars, as well as other things based on the class you're playing. Seven has an information tablet. There are many roles on the battlefield, and sometimes it's hard to know which role you're supposed to be. In this section, you'll learn what each class does, and how you can help your teammates on the battlefield. The standard rifleman has the most choice in weaponry. They can choose between a DC-15S blaster carbine, or a DC-15A light blaster rifle. They also have access to a DC-15S that has a longer range scope. The rifleman's specialty is that he can place down ammo for his squad mates. This can come into a pinch when things like commandos and heavy anti-tank need to get rockets and debts to take things out. The heavy rifleman differentiates from the standard rifleman in that his main focus is fire support. The heavy rifleman is equipped with the primary DC-15A blaster rifle. He's also equipped with the heavy T-20 blaster. The heavy rifleman does not have access to the ammo pack. Instead he has the ability to place down walls. He can then use these walls to mount up his blaster rifle and provide heavy fire support. Republic snipers are equipped with the Falcon 38X. The Falcon 38X excels at long ranges. Where the sniper really excels is his access to hypersonic rounds. These hypersonic rounds deal devastating damage to targets. The jetpack trooper is the most mobile of all the classes. They have a very minimal loadout, providing zero utility. They have access to the jetpack, which gives them angles of attack those droids would ever see. Moving on to the fire support roles, we have the light anti-tank. The light anti-tank has a standard loadout, but they're also equipped with a rocket launcher. This rocket launcher deals a small amount of damage to armor. Clone Engineers are very versatile place with lots of utility. The Clone Engineer is equipped with a DP-23 shotgun. The Clone Engineer has the ability to build up structures and emplacements at an increased rate. The clone engineer also has access to Paro Dates. These Dates have high payload. They can take out enemy FOBs and enemy heads at a quick rate.
Moving on to the staple of the fire support, we have the Z6 Support Trooper. The Z6 Support Trooper is equipped with a Z6 Heavy Rotary Cannon. And, well, why don't you see for yourself? Moving on to the specialists, we have the Heavy Antart Tank. The Heavy Antart Tank has a similar loadout to Lot Antart Tank. However, their rocket launcher deals a devastating amount of damage to enemy armor. The Grenadier has access to a devastating grenade launcher. This launcher can take out groups of droids in one fell swoop. The Grenadier, however, does not have a blaster rifle. But they can build up fortifications and emplacements just as quick as the Engineer. An extremely important and vital role on the battlefield is the Medic. The Medic has a similar loadout to the Rifleman, but instead their DC-15S and DC-15A blaster rifles and a scope. Each Medic is equipped with nine bandages, vector canisters, and a med kit that slowly administers vector to your brothers. Medics are an extremely important role, as they can save tickets in the long run. Moving on to the final specialist, we have the Republic Commander. Commandos are specialists in infiltration. The commando is equipped with a DC-17M blaster rifle, which excels at close to medium range. Commandos have self-healing vector canisters, so they can get back in the fight quick. The commandos also have a large health pool. Commandos are equipped with a heavy plantable explosive. This explosive has a heavy payload, and once planted, can take out entire HEBs and FOBs. I will end this training session with one final refresher on how to drain enemy tickets. Capturing command posts will usually give you about 50 tickets and drain the enemy of about 50 tickets as well, depending on the game mode. Destroying hostile FOB radios and having them bleed out will drain 25 tickets each. Destroying enemy vehicles will drain extra tickets depending on the vehicle. And finally, each droid you kill grants one less ticket for them. <laughs>